This is a very busy setup as you see. Bear with me one minute so I can explain it. So this is the Gulu GTX 280 portable power station. This power station is a jack of all trades. It's supposed to be a jump starter, a power bank. It has many USB ports, USB-A, USB-C, and also it has a power inverter so that it converts the DC power into AC power. So in this video, I'll be verifying all this. I'm going to be putting it to its limits to see if it delivers. To give you a taste of the tests that I'll be doing, I'll be connecting this heater to it through the inverter. So to overload it, and we're going to see if the power protection kicks in and turns it off or will it fry. And another test I'll be doing is that you see these lights and this fan in front of you. All of them will draw between 120 to 150 watts. And this is the maximum output of the power station. So I'm going to turn them on and we're going to see the battery of this power station. How much will it last with all these devices turned on? So let's start first by showing you what's in the box. Let's open the box. So this is everything you get in the box. You have a clip, you have a power inverter. You have a power adapter to charge the power station, a user manual, USB-C to USB-C cable, USB-A to USB-C cable, and a carrying pouch. This portable power station can be charged with a wattage up to 100 watts. So in case you have an adapter that is 100 watts, you can put it and it can draw up to 100 watts. Unfortunately, they provided only with this 30 watt adapter. Another way to charge it fast is by using this inverter. So you plug the inverter in the cigarette lighter of your car and then you use this USB-C port here and then you connect the output to the power station and this way you can charge it with 100 watts. What I will be doing now is that I'm going to be charging it from zero to full using a fast 65 watts USB-C charger and the cable that came with this power station and we're going to time this and see how much time it takes to charge from 0 to 100 percent. So the good thing is that it's drawing the full capacity from my 65 watts charger. After exactly one hour the power station charged already to 46 percent and now the power station charged fully from 0 to 100 percent in 3 hours 48 minutes using a 65 watts charger and this is an excellent result. Let me now talk about the ports and the specifications of this power station. I'm going to start with this port here. So this is DC out 15 volts, 10 amps. So this is where you put the inverter. And on the inverter, you see here you have this AC output. This is 110 volts, 120 watts. And it has a temporary boost of 150 watts. And this is USB-A output. So this is 5 volts, 9 volts and 12 volts. And this is USB-C output and this is a PD output which is also 100 watts. And also on the inverter you have on the back a bypass for the cigarette lighter 15 volts 10 amps. Now let me close this and you have all these ports here. Let's open this. The first one is for the jumper cables. So you put here the jumper cables. Unfortunately it doesn't come with a cable clamp for the battery. The next one is 15 volts output 10 amp DC. And the next one is USB-A 5 volts 2.4 amp. And this one here is USB-A output 5, 9 and 12 volts. And this one here is USB-C output and input. And it is PD 100 watts. Now for the controls of this power station, you have here two buttons. You have the on off button and this is the boost button. The boost button is used when you jump start a car. Let me show you first the power button. You press it here and it powers on and you see it has a very nice 3.2 inches display so now it is charged at 100 percent when you use it you see the wattage here that is being used and the boost button is used to jump start the car if you need more amperage it can go up to 3000 amperes the battery of this power station is 77,000 milliampere hour it is 280 watts hour the battery cell composition is lithium ion and it has a lifetime of 1000 chargers cycles. And if you're using a 100 watts charger, you can charge it in 2.8 hours from zero to full. And if you're using the charger that comes with it, it takes around nine hours to charge fully. 
I should also mention that the AC output of the inverter is not pure sine wave, it is modified sine wave. So I'm gonna avoid using it on any sensitive electronics. And I advise you to do the same also. So don't use it on any medical equipment, on your CPAP machines, microwave, laser printers, and even for me, I'm not gonna use it on my router, on my modem, on my PC. So it's only for the lights and for the fan. On the other side of this power station, you have this LED light. I'm gonna operate it. Careful, the light will light on now and it is a bit strong. So to operate it, you need to press and hold the power button here for three seconds. And here it is. And if you press it shortly afterwards, it goes into blinking mode. And another time, it goes into fast blinking mode. And to turn it off, also short press it another time. Now it's time to perform the tests. And the first test I'll be doing is the overload test. So I'm gonna be connecting this heater to the inverter that is connected to the power station. And this heater draws around 400 watts. And I'm gonna see if the protection of the power station will kick in and it will protect it and it will stop the current to the heater or will it fry? And do not repeat what I'm doing at home. And you notice that I am wearing protective eyeglasses. So let's start the test. So what I'm gonna do first is that I'm gonna connect the heater to the inverter here. So this is the heater connected. And let me turn on the power station. So here it is turned on. It is charged at 100%. And now it's drawing three watts for the inverter. So now I'm gonna turn on the heater. Keep your eyes on the wattage here because you're gonna see it maybe flashing for a little bit of time and then it's gonna stop. And you see like it tried to draw more than 199 watts and directly the protection of the power station kicked in and you see this blue LED light flashing on the inverter. It means that it cut the power so to protect the power station and the inverter. And this is a very good thing. So now I'll be performing the second test. And the second test consists on loading to the maximum the power station through its inverter by powering up these devices that you see in front of you. So here I have an LED light and here also I have an incandescent light. And this is a smaller one also. And I have the fan. So I'm connecting everything through this T cable here and I'm gonna put it in the inverter. And we're gonna see how much time the battery of the power station will last by powering all these devices and you're gonna see if it also overheats and maybe it cuts to protect the power station and the inverter so let's start the test i'm gonna connect them now to the inverter and now the power station started and the power goes to the inverter but everything is turned off i'm gonna turn on one device at a time and you're gonna see how the wattage here will change so this is first this light here this is the led light so it's drawing now around 30 watts, 29 watts. So let me now turn the smaller light here. So now it's around 50 watts. And this is a bigger light. So now it's drawing around 105 watts, 110 watts. And let's turn on the fan now. And this should max out the wattage of this power station. And you see the fan when I turned it on. So now the power station is giving the maximum it can. So it's giving between 120 and 150. So at one hour, the inverter got very hot and it turned off completely. And here I turned off everything and it's still not working. See how it is blinking. And the power station got a little bit hot, but the inverter got really very, very hot. Let me let you hear the fan of the inverter. So it's trying to cool down and it's not working anymore so now it cooled down and it's working again so let's continue the test the power station's battery is almost depleted it's only at one percent and we are at one hour 42 minutes so when you use it at full capacity the power station's battery will last one hour 44 minutes exactly now here I was exaggerating a little bit in this test because I was using it more than its capacity which is 120 watts and this is not a bad result in my opinion. So the test I'll be doing now is I'm gonna try to charge all these devices to max out the USB ports on the power station. So I have an iPad, I have an iPhone, 
I have a micro USB radio and I have an Android tablet USB-C and I have my DJI Osmo Action 4 camera. So I'm going to hook them up and then we're going to see how much wattage will they draw and if it can charge them all together. So now everything is hooked up. Let's turn on the power station. And until now, everything is charging. All the devices are drawing until now about 50 watts. So the DJI Osmo, as you see, it is blinking here. It means it's charging. And this one is charging. And the iPad also is charging. And my iPhone too. And also the radio is charging. Now let me tell you what I like and what I don't like in this GTX 280 power station from Gulu. What I like about it is that it is extremely well built and it has a very large capacity battery which is 77,000 milliampere hour which is really very good. I also like about it that it has a very good protection mechanism and also its battery charges very fast. Now what I don't like about it is that if you push it to the limit it will heat up in about an hour and it will stop working but if you leave it to cool down for about five minutes you can restart using it. What I also don't like about it is that Gulu doesn't provide with it for free battery cables so it is advertised as jump starter but if you don't have the cables you cannot use it so you need to purchase extra cables and this is an extra cost for about $20 on Amazon and also what I don't like about it is that it has modified sine wave when you use the inverter for AC power and this limits its users. If you want to check out this portable power station from Gulu, I'm going to leave affiliate links in the description below. If you make a purchase using my link, I will gain a small percentage at no cost to you and this will support my channel. I want to thank you all for watching. I'm Eloy from Knowledge Sharing Tech. See you in the next video.